We are going to resume the schedule of the Interstate Consortium of Sustainable Development of Amazonia Legal. We're going to resume the state panels with the panel Deforestation in the Amazon, organized by the uh, Public Prosecution of the Environment. I would like to say that Abrampa was invited by the consortium represented of govern by Governor Valdez Borges as a recognition of the work that it does in favor of environmental management, particularly due to some topics that today are very important in this agenda, like deforestation, legal uh illegal deforestation that are now part of our reality. And I would like to highlight that this invitation has a lot to do as well with the relationship between the state of Amapá and the local public uh, prosecution office because of the control operations on the state, but we also have, are able to maintain a very productive dialogue uh, in the state. So I would like to invite Dr. Alexandre Gaio to this presentation, president of Ambrapa, Brazilian Association of Environmental Prosecutors. Então, muito boa tarde a todas e todos. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to thank Secretary Joel, José, and the whole team of the state of Amapá. And I would like to extend my greetings to the Executive Secretariat of the Consortium of the Amazon States. And thank you for the open dialogue that you keep with Abrampa. Thank you for introducing initiatives and proposals towards the same purpose, which is protecting such an important biome and trying to implement instruments that will make a difference in the protection of this biome. I would like to greet everyone that is following online as well. Thank you to the team of Amapá and the Executive Secretariat that are giving us support. I would like to start by talking a little bit about Abrampa. Abrampa is a civil society that has existed for 25 years. It's a civil society composed by members of the public prosecution of the environment that are working in all states of the federation and the federal district and besides the state uh, public prosecutions and the federal public prosecutions we have the labor public prosecution the court of auditors among other entities at Abrampa. Abrampa has always been highlighted for its dialogues with the society the public administration and the executive on environmental and urbanistic topics. In the last few years, Abrampa has been in a very important role in several environmental topics. Much more than that, Abrampa has developed and implemented projects defending the Brazilian biomes and instrumentalizing the public prosecution offices so that they can be more effective in the environmental agenda, so that they can be uniform in their understandings, and so that they can disclose their positions to the legislative, the executive, and to the uh, Supreme Court through amicus curiae manifestations. We have more than 13 amicus curiae participation in the last uh, few years. Here I bring the context and the reason for our presentation. Abrampa is trying to find a proposal of uh, integrated participation of the state prosecution offices and a federal prosecution office in the deforestation of the Amazon. 
And why is this imperious? Why is this so pressing and imminent? Because of this snapshot that we have, which is very unfortunate of destruction of all the Brazilian biomes. Of course, uh, what draws our attention is the Amazon because it is the biome that represents 60% of all the deforestation. We had 1 million hectares deforested in this last year, and that's what makes us concentrate our efforts in such an important biome. Here, According to the data brought by Carlos Nobre, we have 17% of areas that were conferred, converted into other purposes and 17% of degraded forests. So we reach a level that is above 30% from the total remaining vegetation in the Amazon biome. To the extent there are that there are uh, very consistent studies pointing towards the need to reuse the maximum of 20% of the vegetation. In legal Amazon, the legal reserve is 80%, and it's not by chance. Here we have already surpassed the limits, and so much so that we have some regions in the Amazon emitting uh, CO2 with the standing forest. We have clear indications of points of no return in many of the regions, especially in the deforested areas of the Amazon. And another very important problem in the Amazon is the illegal extractivism in the region. 91.6% of the area of illegal extractivism is concentrated in the Amazon. As I said, we are at a point of no return. We are uh, chasing after our harms. We are in a situation that is beyond an emergency. That's why I'm going to bring here this proposal for an emergency uh, response uh, it, with the public administration so that we can face more effectively this situation. The first axis that I'm going to propose is an axis of integration, planning, and organization that is going to happen internally to the public prosecution offices. It's indispensable to create specialized action groups in the environment in all public prosecutions. We have Gaema in the state of Rondonia. In Tocantins, we have a, a, a partial deployment of a body. But in most of the states, we don't have the specialized group. There's a huge advantage to those specialized groups because we have a specialized structure with members that are assigned specifically to this purpose that are only going to work for the environment in civil matters or criminal matters. And with that, they will concentrate the work of the public prosecutions in that purpose. Today, it's very difficult to work in the Amazon because of its large extension and because it's very difficult for a prosecutor in the countryside that accumulates many other responsibilities to work specifically for the environment, either civil or criminally. We're going to create then the GAECOs, the specialized groups that will work with the organized crime groups. They already have the experience to work with the security forces. And from the creation of the Gaemas, uh, at the same time that we will create the Gaemas, we will have terms of cooperation among the nine public prosecution offices of the legal Amazon area with the Federal Prosecution Office, with Abrampa, 
we will elaborate and execute an integrated action plan against deforestation. When I talk about cooperation, there is a very clear fundament in this cooperation, which is the law against organized crime that predicts terms of cooperation among states, between states and the federal government from any place in Brazil to fight against organized crime. These terms of cooperation involve the possibility of transfer of public workers, like auditors, police officers, that can work together with the purpose decided by this group of public prosecution offices with the federal prosecution to fight against deforestation. And I brought here some of the possible measures predicted in this term of cooperation. The first one of them Justamente a previsão de is the sharing of human and material resources. You can imagine a super state group with the federal prosecution that will uh, predict the work, it will predict the participation and the activity of several different state fe and federal public workers, either working for the environment or the uh, public security, and also the sharing of the material resources, because sometimes fighting against deforestation happens in border areas, so it's easier for a group that is closer to the border to work there than uh, moving a group that is working elsewhere. So we have the sharing of resources, the transfer auditors, supervisors, and police officers to the development of intelligence work in the same uh, shape as the GAECO, we'll, we're going to have a group that will work with the cross uh, crossing of data, identification of uh, groups of organized crime. When there is this work in an intensified manner, it is possible to have an effective work and we are going to be able to identify uh, identify who are the groups that are involved in the operation. We're going to have the implementation of a geoprocessing laboratory and the issuing of customized opinions to coordinate this great laboratory with an intention of streamlining the work of all public prosecution offices, either state or federal, to fight the environmental infractions and the implementation of legal office for remote support. We all know that the state public prosecution offices have a hard time to instruct the civil processes, instructing the uh, procedures for investigation. Imagine with that number of warnings, over 100,000 warnings, how could the public prosecutor's office work, offices work with 100,000 investigations? So we must have this legal support that could be remote. It couldn't be, it doesn't need to be face-to-face, -face, providing assistance for the public persecution offices to validate the support and use it. And here we have transparency in data because something that we notice in this project, Amazon and Focus implemented by Abrampa was a lack of access to information and data on how the illegal activities are happening, both in the administrative sphere or civil and criminal spheres. What is happening to the infractor? How many civil uh, prosecution and, and criminal prosecution were proposed? That was, that was clear with our diagnosis. And the idea is that with this big group of uh, different public prosecution offices, we can have this free platform 
for the population to consult and monitor what the public prosecution office is doing so that we can have this educational effect that the entire society knows that who is uh, practicing the legal activity is going to answer for that. And the infractor must know that the, he, he must expect the response of the state if he practices uh, an illegal activity. The first axis was the axis of organization and planning of the public prosecution. And the second axis is an axis of dialogue among different groups of public prosecution offices and the environmental uh, institutions, because the environmental bodies are responsible for, for managing the rural environmental register that we call CAR in Brazil. So uh, the first thing we should understand is that CAR has a control in areas that shouldn't have this register of environmental, uh, uh, rural environmental register, that are the indigenous lands, the settlements from the, the agrarian reform. So we shouldn't have this kind of document car. So the group of the public prosecution offices should interact and to, to ask the the cars in these spaces where this kind of register shouldn't be happening. And the second point concerning the rural environmental register is a duty of the environmental bodies to transform the status from active to suspended in all the rural environmental registers in private areas where there was a register of environmental infraction. So you have that claim, you have that complaint uh, that was registered, and the immediate consequence, if it's proven, is to suspend the, the car. Because if the car is active, any company that we consult to buy the product will believe that his legal situation is okay. If a financial institution will analyze a request for loans and finance, if the car is active, they are going to concede the loan. So based in this ordinance of the Brazilian service, Brazilian Environmental Service, we must have this suspension when it's due. So we've been working that with this uh, administrative recommendation from the Paraná uh, body, and the state body in Paraná has given order to su suspend all the cars in which there are infractions registered concerning that rural property. And here, the dialogue is aimed at creating this task force in order to give provision to the transparency of Sinaflor. So we have to advance. We know the limitations of Sinaflor for being managed and accessed, but it's very hard for us to have this joint work concerning this fiscalization of this authorized uh, deforestation if we don't have a wild, wide and transparent access, something that is happening in the southern region. We only have access to the authorizations which were conceded. So the deforestation happened. We have no conditions to verify if the legal requirement were fulfilled to issue that authorization. And the same reasoning is applicable to, to, to the forest origin documents called DORF in, DORFs in Brazil, because we are trying to have this custody chain 
to allow the traceability of this kind of product which have their forest origin. I'm trying to find my slide. One more. I didn't talk about this one. This dialogue with the federal and state bodies concerning environment and public safety, what we are proposing here with them is that both IBAMA and ECMBU and the federal police and the state bodies of environment and the state bodies of public uh, safety can create this task force together in order to combat deforestation in the Amazon. And here, we, cl we clearly have some methodologies and studies showing the hot spots of the new deforestation. What are the regions where there's more probability for that deforestation happening in the next months and years? So we have here not only the, the provision system from Amazon and INPI also developed this AI system based on productive uh, criteria that is called random forest. And based on this methodology, we are able to identify which are the possible regions where the deforestation is going to happen in the next month. And here we have this perspective of working with this task force to prevent this deforestation. Of course, we should extend that to other regions, but the idea was to start with the command and control in the Amazon with the remote surveillance and the identification of different hypotheses. And for that, we need the face-to-face -face investigation. And at the same time, we should have the work to prevent fires. So we should restart Previo Fogo by IBAMA and should have this dialogue with the state body so that the state plans for combating fires can be updated and funded so that we can hire a fire brigade teams to work in a more effective way concerning the wild, wild fires and fires. In the same line of dialogue with different bodies of public safety and environment, we should sit at the same table to define criteria and methodologies that can deal with transparency, traceability of all of the project products coming from the forest and also the meat chain and the gold chain. We cannot control what is leaving the country. We cannot uh, show who are the buyers to stop this kind of uh, problem if we don't have this entire traceability. We must fully trace all the chains. And the same way what we are proposing here with, uh, in general is the need for this audit concerning the management plans of all of the states, including federal states, to understand if there's no mistake, there's no uh, automatic issuing of permits and undo generation of credit to, to different owners. We have received some indications of problems. So we must review all the management plans to verify if they are complying or not. Here as well concerning the public security bodies, the federal police and the state bodies with GAECOS and GAEMA, GAEMAS, the idea is to work together to identify the criminal rings 
that are dealing with illegal products so that we can intensify these operations, giving priority to these intelligence actions, act, a, attacking the graders and fractors, those responsible for the graders of deforestation and distribution of illegal products. Concerning illegal mining, we have many signs of clandestine works, but also we have the placement of the landing tracks for this illegal mining. So we must stop with these illegal activities. It's not possible that this is still happening with only punctual operations of uh, arrest, seizures, and so on. Another one, please. Another one, please. In the same lines of public safety, we have many authorities with us who have worked with this subject, subject, and they have shown us where to implement the security bases that could be from the federal po police, from the Secretariat of Public Security, from the National Guard. But the fact is that we were able to map and identify several points which are strategic in several states in the Amazon to implement security bases that will provide support to actions and operations that I've just mentioned concerning uh, the destroying illegal mining and stopping illegal activities concerning deforestation and illegal trade of wood. And here we also notice that it's not possible to have this random surveillance in terms of wood exports. It's indispensable that we have not only the uh, automatic uh, surveillance, but also we should have the human society participating in the prevention of this, this, these exports. And only face by face, we will be able to notice. So we must have this kind of face-to-face -face investigation. So this, these exports must be conditioned and this is very important and it's even an emergency, which if we do not paralyze the exports, at, at least we should, should supervise with human presence. And we should interfere in the processes of uh, mining and, and removal of would in the legal cases to verify if it was re really legal, if, if they are complying to the assumptions for that permit, and so on. Now we're talking to the land management bodies. Everyone knows that the first station is concentrated in public lands. And we should work to prevent this kind of deforestation, to hamper this kind of deforestation. So it seems to us that it's indispensable in this task force of the public persecution offices, this dialogue with the bodies, state and federal bodies, which manage these lands so that we can allocate for indigenous peoples or traditional communities or to have um, to have reserves and so on so after seeing the internal organization of the public persecution offices and the dialogue with the uh, environment and, and 
public security bodies, it seems to us that it's necessary to change the perspective, a change of focus, a focus of the public prosecution office with organizing the public prosecution with the GAEMAS. And it's very important that the public prosecution offices are concentrated not in every small deforestation, but concentrating the efforts in the biggest cases, bringing a response for the society and against the scrim these criminals as fast as possible. And it's very important to have this continuous training of the public prosecution members concerning the different potentials of using the criminal instruments to, to make accountable the different infractors. And one of the instruments is to <laughs> consider the different crimes which are forgotten by the, the persecution offices that and we have the invasion of public land, we have also fake identities, the crime of uh, re recepting the, uh, illegal objects, because sometimes we concentrate in the illegal, uh, in, the, in the environmental crime, but we forget about the, the product that is, uh, that is traded, that will uh, influence the, the influencing the the case and we have also cases of theft that is engaging public servants and we also have in the criminal rings we have this link between the the private individuals and legal entities and the crime of money laundry that is trying to to give a, a legal wash of a product that is coming from illegal mining and so on. Here we have, besides the several crimes that can be used, we have the use of criminal legal instruments. And among them, we have a phase of investigation. Besides the search and seizure, we have the breach of um, telephone secrecy, the breach of banking secrecy in order to protect the function, to safeguard the function of the public prosecution. We have uh, all of those breaches of secrecy and in the face of accusation, we have several um, several precautionary measures, protective measures to prevent the imports of lumber. This, These are simple instruments that are predicted in the criminal code and that are very little used. So the person that practiced or the company that practiced a criminal, a, uh, an environmental crime, they're going to respond for it, for that crime. And we uh, can request a protective measure as a warning before they go to prison. So a protective measure that is defined by the judge makes it harder for the criminal to um, practice those crimes again. And in the civil sphere, we have the project Amazon and Focus that uh, did an X-ray of the work of the prosecution office in the Amazon, or in the project Amazon Protects, which is a brilliant work of the Federal Prosecution Office that elaborates technical reports and technical opinions based on experiences that we've already had in other regions of the country, like the Operation 
uh, rainforest standing, the work of Mato Grosso uh, with uh, class actions based on customized opinions. We understand here that the civil action must also work this uh, work focused on this uh, problem of deforestation. The project Amazon Protects must be amplified. Today we work with areas above 60 hectares, but there are several warnings that were still not protect, processed. We, the idea is to prioritize the largest deforestations and afterwards, we're going to think about the other smaller ones. The use of satellite images as well is going to be employed. It's very clear for us, for the public prosecution, this is clear that we can gain a lot in scale if we use um, remote monitoring and satellite images. Just for you to have an idea, the last operation, uh, rainforest standing, in the state of Paraná, half of the supervision by the state body was done remotely. That reduces sensitively the use of uh, public money, especially related to those properties that have environmental rural registry and where you have to identify the property owners. This is uh, developed by the Federal Prosecution's Office. We had an agreement by Justice Hammond Hangeman that defined as legal this uh, public action, even though the, um, pros the, the offender was not known. Once again, I would like to thank you for the attention. And I would like to thank Joel and his whole team, saying that Abrampa is at your disposal to contribute to this task force in the Amazon. The idea, Joel, is that we are going to present this as fast as possible to the ONPs in the Amazon. We're having a presentation of uh, public proposals in the Amazon soon. Many of them already know about our proposals and we count on the consortium of the Amazon states in the this partnership, in this task force, because this is something that is interesting to all of us. This is something we want to be developed because the public prosecution has the responsibility that needs to be fulfilled as effective as possible. These are not completely closed proposals. We can dialogue, we can work together and adjust the proposals. This is going to take be part of our dialogue. But in fact, we want to leave Abrampa at your disposal to take part in this process and to assist the state public prosecution offices and the federal prosecution as well. Thank you. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask. Alexandre, my name is Rodolfo Márcio. I am the Deputy Secretary of Pará. We were in the meeting observatory of the forest in June, and I had the pleasure to discuss with you. I have a few considerations to make. There was an ordinance of MAPA, the Ministry of Agriculture, that establishes that since 2021, the overlapping of indigenous lands is a pending issue. The state of Pará has not enforced this executive order 121, 
but I wonder if why the um, public prosecution has not questioned this uh, CAR, pending CAR order. What I have defended more recently is that we have to work on the perspective of temporary blocking of indigenous lands because the CAR is applied to the rural lands. The indigenous lands are not rural lands. They are federal lands. So why haven't we had this need to temporarily block the indigenous lands in the national system? I think this is a point that we need to discuss. I need to maintain a team to maybe cancel this permanently. As you say, the SICA system is a self-declaratory system. So this is going to be like drying ice. I don't have technicians to look at all of the CAR uh, properties that appear. In the state of Pará, we have over 280,000 CARs filed. I don't have 280,000 employees. Can I answer one at a time before you move on to the next? Thank you for your question. First of all, that event in Rio de Janeiro was very important for us to dialogue a little bit about the implementation of the forest code. I agree with you. The ideal thing would be to have the Brazilian Forest Service, including a command, not to allow the registration of that kind of lands. There was this temporary blocking, but with the temporary, the temporary blocking was suspended. I don't know by whom, but there was a time when there could not be registrations on native lands. In the beginning of January, that's what we intend to do with the new government, with the Brazilian Forest Service. We want to resume the blocking of the system and allowing the registration of the environmental rural registration in these areas. I think we cannot let them register a land in native territories, but we have to look at what was already registered because these rural um, properties that were already registered, if they continue active, they are practicing more than one offense at once. They are invading public lands and they are subtracting public assets besides causing environmental damage. So our idea is at designing a mechanism. IPA is committed to bringing a list and a definition per state of the Federation of where there would be situations that could be easy, easier to visualize so that we could have a list and we could contribute f to this process. But this is a process that cannot happen in isolation. I agree with you. There could be also a prohibition of registration. Another point is the issue of the uh, collective territories. The CARs in, uh, registered in collective territories, they are always badly intentioned. Until 2021, there was a standard from the central bank that would establish a rural credit for an individual registration. And many beneficiaries from collective territories like Quilombolas to obtain a rural credit or to adhere to the programs of uh, provision of food for family agriculture, they would file for C uh, individual CERs. And I think the first action that should be done is to update the list of beneficiaries from collective territories. And the public prosecution should stimulate the state bodies to establish as a priority the list of beneficiaries so then we could separate what is a beneficiary car and what is a car from people that want to appropriate 
those collective territories. If we cancel everything, then we would create a big problem for the beneficiaries themselves. We will cancel their rural credit and we will create a big problem for the public policy. In relation to that, I was talking to the EPUM personnel about this concern, and our biggest concern was not to make any uh, injustice. We don't want to cancel the CR of the people who actually possess those properties. We don't want to reach those populations at all. The idea is that those populations are kept out of this um, strategy as the law establishes. And I agree that could be a proposition so that with the task force, we can also do a review and, uh, and a, a proposition of the best way to solve that problem in each part of the population, in each, part, each region of Brazil. In the state of Pará, we have already established uh, 27 original territories, and the list is approved by them. When they approve the list, we include all the taxpayer enrollment numbers of the beneficiaries, and after that, we clean the bases, the database with the taxpayer enrollment numbers that are not in that list. My last point is about, uh, you mentioned that the environmental bodies are managers of the CAR. We are managers of the CAR system. I think we should provide more responsibility for the environmental bodies of the territories. I never received from FUNAI, for example, they are the managing bodies of their territory. So they are the ones that should point out the priorities. For example, uh, cancel the CAR that appeared in my territory, because when I do this cancellation, I always notify the managing body so that they can see if this is something that should be canceled. There are models of settlement that are the same as the individual CAR, but there are other models that are collective CAR. So we're always trying to keep this dialogue with the with the environmental body. FUNAI, for example, they tell us cancel the CAR because we don't have enough technicians to look at the whole territory at the same time. So if there is a demand from the body asking us to do this cancellation, this is going to be a lot easier to uh, for us to clean the database. Thank you. We're going to write down this uh, suggestion. Good afternoon. How are you? Uh, first of all, I would like to say I am the Environmental Secretary of Ondonia. We have a great partnership with Gaema, with Dr. Pablo. They are wonderful people. He lives 700 kilometers away from Porto Velho, but we have a great work developed there, and we are very concerned because sometimes we have criminal actions. Sometimes the invasion to public lands happens there. Sometimes we asked for separation. And two days later, the person is caught inside the area again. The envi environmental crimes have very weak uh, penalties, Ma maximum penalties of two years. So the person is arrested today and tomorrow they are free again. But the criminal actions are necessary. I talked to Dr. Pablo all the time, but we need more criminal sanctions. They are very uh, short penalties, but the it stay on their records. If they join sanctions like money laundering, environmental crime, organized crime, the person is going to be arrested for other matters. It's like Al Capone that uh, 
murdered a lot of people and then he was arrested for tax evasion. We have a good relationship with Kayama, as I said, and the work of the public prosecution is very important to guarantee protection because they are the only ones that can start a criminal action. The big author of public civil actions that are going to gather big groups of people. In Hondonia, we don't have any land invasion, a single land invasion. We have a uh, anonymous group. So we have the work, we need the work of the supervisor and the author of criminal actions. So in Hondonia, we have trouble. We are having trouble, but we are advancing progressively and we're advancing in a good way. Thank you very much for the lecture. Fabulous lecture. Thank you very much. I have to thank you. Uh, I congratulate the state of Hondonia. I had the honor and the satisfaction of uh, being a prosecutor there, spent uh, 10 months there. I was in Porto Velho, Vilena, in Colorado. I have to send hello to Pablo, a big partner of Abrampa. And what you mentioned in terms of crimes is something that has to be better worked on. I'm going to give you an example of an operation that we took in the south, again, fighting against uh, wild birds. Usually we see the birds as a whole being trafficked and being commercialized. And what happens is a circumstantial term, elaboration of a circumstantial term, and then the release of the criminal. We saw this man, José Nildo, that was caught in the airport of Brasilia uh, with some box of canneries that came from the Amazon. And he already took this trip over 10 times, as he said. And he was released. In our view, he was improperly released. When a person is working with transportation of an animal, of course, this is Article 29, but with an illegal origin. He was captured illegally. Besides being an environmental good, it is an economic good. It is in the commercial relationship. So this man was supposed to be arrested for three to eight years. It was an inflagrante delicto. And with this inflagrante delicto, it was possible the police officer could ask for his cell phone and ask for a media breach, a telephone breach, telephone record breach. He would dis they would discover who sold to him, who hired him to transport those birds, who was going to buy those birds. We could work with the crimes that we already have. And I really wanted to say here that we could combine the crimes, not only the environmental crime. Because we are going to have several crimes together so that we can have a fair penalty. I'm talking about justice because there, it, it's more than a legal asset that is being as, uh, affected. And for that, we must have this task force and we must have training as well. That's why I reinforce this idea of Gaema, because it's very hard to think that each prosecutor in each different jurisdiction will have the time and conditions to have to do such a such a processing and should be that should be in the hands of expert groups that could use the more serious uh, cases working in a, an exemplary way applying uh, protective measures and measures that could take the infractors to prison and so on Thank you, everyone.